Our okay, thoughts and come feelings on. are our own and they're not representative <laughs> of the come on. as a whole or anyone else. I hate you so much right now. <laughs> oh my god. That was how long was that? Once I give you what a time full two minute protest. Podcast. Yep. It was host, two minutes of silence. Brandon I wasn't gonna Roger talk. McDaniel. You're gonna quit fucking Let's with go ahead and get right into the I show. I didn't do anything. I just asshole. started the show. Yeah, you're an asshole. Good begin. And there's no good in you. <laughs> there isn't really. Yeah, so I was just like, fuck that. I'm not gonna talk. I'm just gonna do a silent protest and I'm not gonna say a thing. You talk about it for an hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess what we're gonna do today. Guardians of the Galaxy. You've seen it? Yes. You saw it Sunday? Yes. Okay. And we've been talking about wanting to do a Guardians of the Galaxy episode after it came, after we watched the movie. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and ask you, where do you rank this one out of all the Marvel movies? Three. Top five. Guardians of the Galaxy and then, and then, um, the Winter Soldier and then Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and then, um, Civil War. And then the next is probably going to be Spider-Man after that. I am right now. It's the Winter Soldier is my number one. Yeah, Guardians Part One was my number two. Yeah, Guardians Part Two is definitely probably sitting in three, and it battles between it and Civil Wars because Civil War was so fucking epic. Yeah, um, <clears throat> Age of Ultron was really really good. I enjoyed it for what it was, but man, it's just like when you start getting into how good this this movie was. And what it did and where it went and all the possibilities that it's now opened up. There is a lot to pick apart from Guardians Volume 2. I mean, there was a lot. I'm just going to say it right now. To me, Kevin Feige is the mastermind behind the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. James Gunn is his right-hand man when it comes to the Marvel Cinematic Space Universe. What he has set in motion with these two films... I don't think people still appreciate. I don't think they will appreciate it f until 10 years from now because he set in enough stuff in the galactic Marvel Cinematic Universe that people don't even realize. Just with this movie, there were some things that he introduced. Okay, so let's let's look at it. Let's just start breaking them down. You want to break it down by post credit scenes or how do you want to do this? Well, there's one thing that I wanted to mention is that James Gunn has opened up the color palette for Marvel. Oh gosh, yeah. As far as like cinematic visuals and things, because like all the movies that happen on Earth, they're kind of stuck with urban Earth color palettes. Lots of grays, lots of. I mean, there is color. It's not like it's the washed out like right. DC dark universe look, but Guardians, everything has color in it. It's a pop. It pops. It's visually appealing, and you can see <clears throat> that hand at work doing that same work on Thor Ragnarok just from the trailers on Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just in terms of like visual cinematic quality, I think James Gunn really came into his own in this film because there's a lot of shots in there that are very artistic. There's like a shot of, you know, a, a very wide open space of just desert and Gramora off not even center frame off on the right by herself sitting down doing nothing like there's no real reason for that shot to be in there but it's just beautiful it and that's looked why like it's something there. from a comic book exactly it was a comic book shot brought to life yeah and he's done here's my thing stuff that he's introduced because mm -hmm. he didn't stick to just the guardians universe yeah. with the things he's introduced so let's break it out okay number one thing that stands out to me he really introduced the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the movie, and, and I, I guess before we get into this, we should make the say, this is going to be heavy with spoilers. If you have not seen the film, please stop this nail because we're about to fuck up your whole world. We're about to really, there's no stone going to get left unturned, okay? Mm -hmm. No heading back, five, four, three, to if you're still here it sucks to be you okay let's go so one of the first things he did at the end of the film we you know we're introduced to sylvester stallone during the film mm -hmm. we learned that there were all these other ravager cliques mm -hmm. so we, you know that's comic book lore but the original ravagers the group that we see at the end of the film where it's you know stallone and the guy that was made of crystal and <clears throat> 
uh, I can't think of that freaking robot's name, man. Uh, the artificial intelligence that was like, it looked like a head and it goes, I've missed you guys so much that, you know, yeah. which we're going to fuck people up when they realize that was Miley Cyrus's voice playing that. Um, that character, that group was the original Guardians of the Galaxy. They were the original ones. So the Ravagers were the Guardians before there was a Guardians. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was one of the things that I found that I really enjoyed was because it brought up the fact that Yondu truly was one of the original Guardians of the Galaxy before there was a Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it was kind of neat to see that happen, to see them acknowledge that, you know, the Guardians that we're watching now are the Guardians that were, you know, they're the ones that uh, that, that are running the show now. They're current, you know, Marvel Universe. But there was a team with a Yondu and all these guys where they were heroes before. I think that was excellent, man. And it, and it really, as a guy who, who remembers the comic books, you know, when I was a younger kid, man, I'm, I'm talking, I was reading comic books in the 70s. It was cool to see that kind of paid homage. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the same high I got from watching Doctor Strange. It really paid homage to a lot of the trippier aspects from when I was a kid. Uh, so, um, man, there was just so much that happened in there with just them setting that up that I really liked that, man. Um, I can't think about who else was in there. There was a... We know Miley Cyrus played the voice of that. Now, I'm not saying that they're setting it up to go set up a Ravagers movie or anything like that. Yeah. But it was... There's it, a possibility. I they mean, definitely could. Um, we saw Michelle Yeoh where she played a, Alita Orgard, which was in the comic book. Uh, that would have been uh, Sylvester Stallone, who was the original star. He wasn't... Uh, what was it? Starhawk. I wanted to say that was his name in the comic was Starhawk. Uh, that would have been Starhawk's wife, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was kind of neat. There was some stuff they did in there. Uh, I want to say, I can't think of the name of that AI. I want to say it was Mainframe. I want to say that's the name. I'd have to go look it up, man. But it was so neat just what they did with that, man. Uh, the other thing they established in the movie, we saw them establish the Watchers. Yeah. And the greatest Stanley cameo of all time, as far as I'm concerned, is in that movie. Him fucking talking to the Watchers? Yeah. Okay, now let's get into this. And I told you something about this. You know, for the longest time, it had been a fan. It was a fan-made thing where fans said, hey, I bet you Stan Lee is an agent for the Watchers who, that's why he has all these different cameos and all the different films, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I always thought, hey, that's neat, you know? That's a great idea. James Gunn made that f- pretty much here he Can. is. He's talking to him, and he even says, and then one time I had to be a FedEx delivery guy, which he's referencing one of his cameos in that yeah. in that one line. So I thought, man, James, you're, you, you're really, that is the greatest fan service when this fan-made idea is actually being announced, you know, in the movie and it's being acknowledged. I thought that was so neat. I thought it was so cool. Uh, we got to see Howard the Duck again. Yeah. Who... I'm not sure if I want a Howard the Duck movie. I'm just going to be honest. I'm not sure if I ever want to be tortured with that again. But it was neat that he's acknowledged. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then it was also the uh, uh, the, the Cosmo Dog. Yeah. You, you know, who from comic books, you know. he Was he in the movie or was he just in the credits? Because I remember him being in the credits. He was in a scene in the movie, I think, where... I think they walked through a bar and he was there, but you didn't really acknowledge it that he was there. Mm-hmm. There was weird, weird stuff like that throughout the whole movie. Yeah. You know, where you just kind of go, what the world is going on here? Uh, also, the Celestials, the whole Celestials universe. There, We've acknowledged that there are Celestials now. Yeah. I mean, there's Celestials. There's also what, the one above all. The, the Beyonder could exist now. Yeah, the Beyonder fucking... And I mean, this is one of the things they did in the last movie. Remember where they were in the prison in the first movie? We talk about this really heavy on that first Guardian special we did. Yeah. Was that the prison that they were in was the head of a celestial. You remember? Yeah. And that was the prison they got broke out of. And I say, so they're no, not. No, that's the, the prison that they were in was not on, on the celestial. The celestial's head was where the collector's uh, collection the, is. Yeah. And, and it was just the idea that they were like, so you're acknowledging that the celestials are here. 
we get Ego the Living Planet and we get this whole story that's great. And it, and it just kind of plays into this. He just opened up the whole galactic universe with this one movie. Like there's other stuff out there that they're not even acknowledging. James Gunn put his brother, his mom, and his dad in this movie. That's that's Jim Gunn Sr. and Leota Gunn. I'm assuming that's his mom and dad. They're playing Weird Old Man and Weird Old Man's mistress. And then um, his brother is playing, what's his name? Go back here. Uh, Craglin. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, so his whole fucking family's in this movie. Bro, he brought his A-game for this one. Um... And I did see there. Yeah, we did say it was mainframe. That was the name of the yeah, character that Miley mainframe. Cyrus played, mainframe. So uh, I did not know Rob Zombie was in the film. Wait, what? Yeah. Oh. I oh, had no idea. Ravager. Yeah, there's a lot of um, people who were just random ravagers that were in the in there as well. And I know our buddy Adam Wright who came on and did the, uh, he did the uh, WWE. WWE special with us. He was telling me that there was a guy, and I don't remember, um, he was in a death metal band named Death. I think he told me he was in the film. Yeah, Richard Christie from the band Death was also, he has a cameo in Guardians. And so I was like, Richard Christie's in this movie? And he's like, yeah, he's he's one, I think he was one of the Ravengers. Oh, yeah, Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, So here's a man who's walked between two worlds. Michael Rosenbaum. Uh, Lex Luthor. used to be Lex Luthor on... Was yeah. it Smallville? Yep. Yeah. He's uh, playing Martin X. The gold guy, who yeah. was her assistant, who st- sat up there with a, a Th- Aletha, what's her name, whatever her name yeah. was, the queen. And then Ben Browder from uh, Farscape was the uh, one of the admirals mm-hmm. who was directing the, um, the gold army. I can't remember the fuck their names are. Man, there was so much cool stuff like that, man. That I mean, there was a lot of little things that I thought he did with this, he, that he did right. Um, to me, this guy gets how to tell a compelling story while giving me just big box office popcorn flick, man. That's so much fun. Um, I, I really enjoyed the film. I liked a lot of the little references they made in it. Um, only thing I... I got ideas. I got I got some questions. Now, in the credits, there was mm-hmm. one thing that I saw. I'm, I kind of like that they're not making... You, you, you're not really hyping up the next film. You're, you're letting every movie be its own self-contained film now. Because the five... There were five post-credit scenes, which one of my buddies didn't even know. He said at the theater he went to, they turned it off after three. He didn't see all the post-credit scenes. I went, yeah, there are five post-credit scenes. He said, what? I went, yeah, there were five. He said, no, there was only three. I went, no, they may have turned it off at the three. There are a total of five of them. Yeah. Uh, the biggest one of the five was Adam Warlock. Mm-hmm. And if people who haven't read the comic book, we're going to go ahead and break this down. So we know the next Avengers movie is a two-part thing, going to be called basically the Infinity War, the Infinity Gauntlet, which was a Jim Starlin comic book Jim Starlin kind of uh, driven miniseries that was uh, about Thanos getting this golden glove with all the gemstones you know and soul stones in them mm-hmm. and his he's going to get the glove and with that glove he can remake, remake reality however he wants to do it and that's what the Avengers next film is going to be about and has been kind of alluding to this whole time is that he's on the search for that glove and to get all those stones okay yeah and that is the big climax film. I think that they're they're working toward this whole time. That's you know the big payoff that we've been waiting twelve years for. But it's when you start going through it and you start realizing, yeah, that's a great story. But there's something kind of missing before you tell the story because in that comic, a guy came through who was an alien who was a badass who ended up getting that glove before Thanos. And played very prominent in the story, and his name was Adam Warlock. Yeah. And Adam Warlock was born out of a cocoon uh, from that golden race, who I know I'm going to butcher their name. What were their names? Were they the Krillorians? Do you remember the name of the group, the a- alien race? The the name of the alien race? It's the making... Golden People? Yeah, I don't remember their name. I know I'm going to fuck the name up, but I, I remember that was one of the f- things that kind of got me about it. Uh that was that when at the very end of that credit scene, we kind of see, oh, crap, 
that's Adam Warlock. Now, I don't know. Have you went back and watched part one recently? Uh, we started to watch a little bit of it before we went because we had like a half an hour to burn. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get that far into it. Uh, if you get a chance, go back to the scene with the collector. Where you're, you know, where we, where we meet the collector, Benicio del Toro is the collector. That cocoon was in that first movie. Yeah, um, I remember seeing it in the background, but I think they kind of decided that that needed to become canon because at this point, there's really nobody who can deal with Thanos, and Adam Warlock is, I'm guessing, going to be the person who's going to be dealing with him. Yeah, because yeah. like Captain America would get punched like a fucking three year old. And there's nobody else on Earth who has that kind of power, unless they're going to... Unless they want to introduce Squirrel Girl somewhere in... Well, I mean, technically they are introducing Squirrel Girl, but I don't think that she's going to be part of fucking... Yeah, of of this. But let's face it, if if people don't read the comic books, they may not know this, but the goofiest character in the Marvel Universe is the person who single-handedly defeated Thanos. That is comic. That's not, you know, like a what if story. That wasn't some side story. That is canon. That yeah. is official. She was the one person who beat Thanos. She's beat a couple of heavyweights by herself. Mm-hmm. A woman who has the ability to control squirrels and speak to him telepathically beat Thanos, which yeah. is the probably the most embarrassing ass whooping he ever. And then took. didn't didn't he get in his little helicopter and fly away at that point? She whooped his ass. I mean, it wasn't like she did some shit and he tripped up and knocked himself out. She whooped his ass. Yeah. Like a little runaway. She whooped his ass and and, and embarrassed him. And he had to live with it for the rest of his life. Squirrel girl beat me. Yeah. Saying her name would make me embarrassed. Who beat you? I don't want to say. Who beat you? Squirrel girl. Man, get the fuck out of here, dog. (laughs) Get out of here. You let a girl named Squirrel Girl whoop your ass like that? But yeah, that's true. That's So, I mean, they set up some things in this movie that I'm like, that's great stuff you're setting up. But what's the payoff? Now, so we got the Ravagers established. Mm-hmm. We got yeah, Miley Cyrus as a character that wasn't annoying. That was cool. <laughs> I was scared when I saw she was in the movie. I was like, what the fuck is Miley Cyrus doing in a Marvel movie? What is she going to be? Okay, I like that. I like the character she's playing, and the voice matches perfect for what she does. Uh, most people didn't even know that was Miley Cyrus. When I pointed it out to my brother, he was like, what? I see that was Miley Cyrus. Um, they, we got Adam Warlock established. It's done. We, we now that, know that Adam Warlock is coming. So the, uh, the Watchers were established. Mm-hmm. I still, you know why I got happy about the Celestials being established. Because I want a real Galactus on screen one day. It's not going to happen. I know. You keep saying it's never going to happen because Fox is a bunch of idiots. Well, yeah. Century Fox is idiots. But I still want it to happen. They just they just need to give the property back to Marvel. I still want I it think to even if they gave the property back to Marvel, I don't think that Marvel would touch it. Because it's poisonous. I think that they would they would probably touch Galactus and they would probably touch like the, the Silver, Silver Surfer, Surfer, maybe. But they're not going to touch the fucking the Fantastic Four with a 10-foot pole. There's been too... There's too many terrible fucking fantastic four films and there's no place for anybody but basically like reed richards and the thing in the marvel universe and like the thing should just be a part of guardians of the galaxy like he is currently and reed richards should i mean they could introduce the the council of reeds but that would be about as far as i think they could take it and actually have people be okay with it it's like nobody cares about them like they they're not as big as they used to be in marvel's it's not, it's not even that, they, that they're not as big as they used to be. It's just that people don't... They were introduced as a superhero team, but also as a family, and nobody gives a shit about that anymore. They want to see a bunch of different people who actually, you know, don't really like each other, but tolerate each other and are funny together, and that's not what they are. The reason why Guardians works is because they all fucking hate each other. <laughs> Or they just, their their personalities are so, I think they all, they're, you know what they're like? They're like that crew of best friends. We are all going to, you and I are, are guardians of the galaxy. Yeah. We get on each other's fucking nerves sometimes. But if push come to shove, I would beat somebody's ass for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, we are family at this point. It's mm-hmm. just, they are, we are that family where you say, I like you more than some family members. We are family. I would whoop somebody's ass for messing with you. You would have my back if shit came to start go down. And that's that's the thing is like the the Fantastic Four 
one doesn't make any fucking sense now. Like the the four personality types that make up that family would not have gone on a mission together to another planet. <laughs> Just doesn't make any fucking sense. The only one who would have gone on that mission would have been Reed. So you'd have to completely rewrite their backstories to make them even somewhat believable. And they've been rewritten to death over and over again in film already. People don't like them. People see Fantastic Four and run the other fucking way because they're not going to see that shit anymore. Oh, God, no. Now, I still think we could do a Silver Surfer story. Yeah. I still think a Silver Surfer story would work. A Silver Surfer is, especially if we put Silver Surfer out in the galaxy, just travel. He could travel to all the places that the Guardians go. Yeah, he I could has, see, he's not I could limited see to Earth. Silver Surfer in a Guardians of the Galaxy movie. I could see Galactus attacking a planet and the Guardian showing up, and then yeah, yeah, like I could see the the plot of the previous Fantastic Four movie that happened in like two thousand four mm-hmm. happening again on an alien planet with Guardians of the Galaxy replacing the Fantastic Four with Galactus trying to eat the fucking planet. And they got to save him in the Herald of Galactus. The Silver Surfer comes in and they could team you up could, and... You could introduce... You, like, you could even have it be a planet that's protected by the Nova Corps as well. So you could have the Nova Corps in there. Oh, if we could get Nova in one field. Yeah. You could have Nova in there. I mean, there's there's a bunch of possibilities. The other cool thing would be to get Tony Stark off of Earth and, and, and with the Guardians. Because I know at some point he's running around with the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's, well, now the comic book's so fucked up because of everything that just went down with Civil War Two. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Tony Stark had dealings with the Guardians before. Yeah. Captain Marvel had dealings uh, with the, the Guardians before. Could you imagine the banter between fucking um, Tony Stark and, and uh, Rocket? Would be amazing. Yeah. Especially if Tony could understand Groot, that would be even funnier. Oh my God. He'd build some kind of thing to talk to him. And it'd be hilarious because he would understand what Groot was saying. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just a also, well done. Did Peter now understands Groot? What Groot says? Yes. At that the very the end, we see where he's talking thing. to Groot, kind of like Han Solo used to talk to Chewbacca. Yeah. And he's talking to teenage Groot. Yeah. And Groot's being a sullen teenager playing a video game. And he's holding a conversation with Peter, and it's fucking worth the price of admission to see Sullen Groot I'm Groot <laughs> you know kind of saying that mocking him I'm not lame you're lame you don't call me lame and clean up your room I'm Groot <laughs> and I was like oh my god that was awesome and I, I just thought that was that to me let's go ahead and deal with this there was something I want you and I had talked about this I am fanboy, 100% fanboy for David Bautista right now. <laughs> I'm done. I never want another person to play Drax. <laughs> he got more screen time. He was funnier. It was like they finally let this, they wrote that character to a way where it was just like, oh my God, that deadpan humor that he's, you know, like, so insulting and just so matter of fact and just kind of a giant idiot. Very but, beautiful. But he was inside. just like I could not see this team working without him. It was it was amazing. Like where he was just insulting and just kind of a a numbskull, but he had the greatest, funniest lines in the entire film. When he gets shot in that fucking after the credit scene by that fucking arrow, I lost my shit. Oh my gosh, yes, when he gets shot by the air, he just yells over and over. I was like, that's price of admission. When he tells her, you are also beautiful on the inside. On the inside. <laughs> and it's his, his, uh, his play with Mantis in that film, who was the actress that played Mantis? That's, I actually kind of want to know who did that because to me, she was hilarious. In fact, pull that up on the screen. That's our full cast and crew. Uh, directed and written by James Gunn. And let's see. Are you going to be able to hold on to that? <laughs> uh, I'm going to keep dropping it over and over again. Uh, let's see. Who was it? She played Mantis. Uh, um, I, I have no idea how to say that. Tom Clementif? I think so, yeah. So, I don't know who this woman is. I loved her. I loved her. She was hilarious. She, I just, the entire time, laughing. Um, mm-hmm. 
they can't do anything with that character, man. Like Mantis and the way that um, Drax and her just reacted. Oh, it was hilarious. You no, know, my favorite thing is when he was like gagging. Mm -hmm. When he was in bed and he was gagging and it's like, she said, what is wrong with you? Uh, I just pictured us being intimate. <laughs> and she was like, I don't even like you like that. I don't even know what you are. And he went, there's no need to be hurtful. I was like, you just said all this insulting, hateful stuff to her for 20 minutes and now your feelings are hurt. I could not quit laughing at that part when that happened. I was like, okay, I'm done. This Give me, I was like, for for a good five minutes, I was at the point where it's like, you could announce a Drax movie at the end of this, and I'll go pre-order my ticket today. I would watch this man for 90 minutes, be a freaking <laughs> idiot, and laugh uncontrollably. Um, but man, it was I. there were so many things they did. My favorite running joke, Taser Face. Yeah. Taser Face. The running joke about that name and how ridiculous sounding it was. Hilarious. He was like the Guardians of the Galaxy's like first villain too. Very first villain from the comic book, Taser Face. A lot of people did not realize this. It was it was kind of funny, but he was a villain from original lore. Kind of gets another little fan service that we get from uh, Gunn. So that was neat. But man, just the whole idea behind it. That was the name, Aisha. The Queen, Elizabeth Debicki. Bro, I kind of have a thing for the Queen. <laughs> the Golden Queen had me, bro. The, the whole thing about, yeah, they told you people were douchebags. And I was like, bro, no. Was I using the wrong eye? That's such good stuff. Um, did you think it was too much comedy just to write them out? Or? I don't know. It wasn't that there was too much comedy. It was just there was something missing. I think the the soundtrack was a little lacking this time around. I liked this. Okay, let me. I say mean, it. the soundtrack was good. It was just like it wasn't the first soundtrack. I think was such a better mix. This one here was more like radio rock friendly for the soundtrack. But you know what my favorite thing was that opening title sequence with Groot was amazing. The opening title sequence with Groot dancing to one of the greatest ELO songs ever, Mr. Blue Sky. It's just a mm -hmm. great song. They don't get enough credit for that song. It's used a lot, man. You know, you hear it in commercials and stuff, but I had never seen a credit where it was like, I really love this credit with Groot. This is a great way to open this film. So I, I enjoyed that, man. I really did. Uh, Karen Gillian as Nebula. I truly believe we're going to see that character again in the Avengers film. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're done because her idea is she has to kill Thanos. Yeah. There's no way she's going to let it go down to the Avengers or, this, or the Guardians who all are going to have to come together for the film and it not, you know, and her not get into this with it. Yeah. She's going to have to show up for that film. I don't think we've seen the last of her. And they've already announced a third Guardians film. From what I understand, it's not coming till 2020. Well, I know that there's going to be two films. I don't know if it's going to take that long, but yeah. Uh, from what I understood, what I was reading online so far is that we won't get a third Guardians film to 2020, but the problem is already is that means you're going to give me, in 2018, don't we get the next Avengers? And no, in I, the next, I, I think the next Avengers movie is technically the the war, like Infinity War. And that's in 2018. And then the next one after that is 2019. Yeah. So you're telling me they're going to do those two films before we get our third Guardians film. Maybe. That's rough. I mean, it's a, there's a lot of visual effects that go into that film. And oh, yeah. All, no. the, there's only so many people who they can get to come in and do visual effects, and they're probably going to be pretty fucking swamped. I mean, Infinity War is going to be two movies. Two movies. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's, it's a, I mean, there's some big stuff there. But you got to think, man, to me, that's you're, you're already told us we're getting a third film. We're just going to be a while before we see that third film, and a lot of shit is going to go down before that third film. Yeah. But in that film that means by the time we get to it we could have um we technically could be back in a situation where we have adult group by the end mm -hmm. we may have adult group by the time the infinity war starts next year no i don't think so depends on how much time passes in the cinematic universe before this film starts yeah and i mean also they didn't really show a passage of time between baby Groot and then yeah he all was, we know is he could we, have just Growth spreaded overnight. Yeah. So all I know is right now we have a film that gave us a baby group and it ends with teenage group. 
Yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like all of that detritus that was in his room, all those dead branches and shit, that could all be from his growth spurt. Mm -hmm. And that could have been a couple of days after the end of the movie. Yeah. All I know is that we do got a part where Peter now understands teenage group. So something's going on. We don't know how much time is passing. Um, that brings me to this. So who are our players for the next Avengers film? We know Dr. Strange is in there. We know Dr. Strange is coming to play. Everybody. I mean, the next Avengers film is infinity war. That's there's not going to be like an Avengers movie that happens before Avenger, uh, before infinity war. And literally the cast list for that movie is like over 50 people now. Yeah, because, well, here's the thing. We have, there's two teams. There's two teams of Avengers. There's Captain America's Avengers. He broke off the raft, which would have been, you know, Falcon Hawkeye. And, and Hawkeye. And, and, and Ant-Man. And who else was on there on the raft? I think that was it. I think it was just them. There was some, yeah, there were some people on the raft. Well, who was the female? No. Scarlet Witch wasn't there. Mm. Was she? Because no, she wasn't there. Who was in the jail? There was more people in the jail. Now I gotta go watch. I that mean, there movie. was more people in the jail, yeah, but those are the only people. The that, heroes that, that left with. Him. I those think the there only, was four. A Falcon, I think, was in there too. Falcon so, was in yeah, the jail. Yeah, that's who it was. So Falcon was there. So there's Captain America's Avengers who were broken off the raft. Mm -hmm. Then we have Tony's Avengers, which is where we're gonna have Tony. We're gonna have uh, Vision, mm -hmm. Black Widow. Yeah, the government sponsored Avengers. But, you know, the last thing he told him was, if you ever need me, you can call on me. So there's going to have to be something huge that brings them back together. Yeah. Which we think is Thanos. But then that still leaves us Hulk, Thor, which I think is really important how that film ends. Don't forget, we got the Black Panther movie coming up. That's some... Oh, Black Panther's still in play. Winter Soldier's still in play. Yeah. Well, Winter Soldier's kind of... In stasis. In stasis, because he doesn't have an arm. We got some things about to go down, you realize. But here's the thing about adamantium is in that country. Yeah. Adamantium comes from Wakanda. He will have an adamantium arm by the they time. Will, they will rebuild him. Yeah, it's going to be there by the time it goes down. So my question is, we got all this cool stuff going on. When's it go down? Who's going to be in play? Because, man, there's a lot of heroes in play for you don't do a story. And, and let's face it, if we bring in the Guardians... We already announced that there's an Adam Warlock at play somewhere in here. Yeah. And so we, I think the first film is going to be Thanos gathering the storm, uh, gathering the stones, and the heroes trying to get ready for, or try to go stop his black guard. I don't I mean, know. I mean, that that means, like, Adam Warlock has the soul stone, doesn't he? In the comics, he has the soul stone. Yeah, he had and a stone embedded Vision in Vision has the mind stone, mm -hmm. which means that at least two people have got to die for him to gather all five of them. The other one is who's how did the the stone that was in was he already the has, reality stone or the yeah. mind stone that Loki had in his staff? Yeah, because there was a stone there. Yeah, well, that stone I think has already been because I think Thanos already has three of the stones. I, think I didn't got, think he had any of them yet. They were all still in holding because remember he puts the glove on and says I have to do it myself. Yeah, and that was a stoneless glove, but we could see where stones were going to fit into it. Yeah, so I think he's already got a couple. I think we got to see how Thor ends before we start figuring out. And my other thing is, are we going to get the all the guys? You know, he had, there was, Thanos had a black guard. Mm -hmm. There were five, you know, despots that worked for him, you know, that were like his elite bodyguards. Like Corvus Glaive and uh, Supergiant. You, you're not aware of any of these names that I'm throwing out. Yeah, this is, there's some shit that Thanos comes with, man. Thanos mm -hmm. comes with baggage. You don't just get Thanos whooping your ass. Thanos could drop five guys on you who you would have to beat down before you got to Thanos. And these five guys are all like toe to toe with the Hulk. Good, okay. So if they can the go Hulk's to toe to off planet too. Yeah. So you got a lot of shit you got to get back to Earth to fight Thanos. Not counting if they're gonna bring in the Netflix guys. They ain't gonna because you do, guys. you know, Power Power Man and Iron Fist were part of that fight. So that's that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, I, even though I, I would, I'd have to throw these pants and underwear away if they would let that happen. I would happily jizz myself in the theater and burn these pants if they would bring those guys in. But I doubt they will. They won't. Yeah. So I mean, but there's stuff at play that we could see going down and that we need to see before they drop that film on us. Uh, anything standing out? Did I miss anything? Not really, I don't think. Yeah. 
I, I was just the whole time I was watching the film. I was just like, I'm gonna go back for a second time. But the whole time I'm watching the film, the first time I want to go and watch it and enjoy it as a film. Mm-hmm. But the podcast in me <laughs> kept breaking down the film, and I was with my brother, so it was my my birthday gift to him. And and for everybody, I'm giving a shout out to my brother. May 9th was his birthday. He turned 43. You know, it was cool. I took him to the theater. Hey, whatever you want, it's on me. Tickets on me. I got him like some M and M's and and an icy. And then I know this guy loves like the Angus beef hot dog, so I bought him a hot dog that he didn't expect. I was just tr- spoiling the shit out of it. It's my baby brother, man. And it's so we don't have a lot of traditions in our family. Yeah, but we try to watch Marvel movies together. That's why I was. I can't go with you, Randy. I can't go. I'll do Star Trek with you That's every okay. day. I, I couldn't go. I'm just... I know. By the end of the week, our weeks. Can we just acknowledge that? Our weeks are starting to get crazy. It seems like the bigger this podcast is getting, the crazier our personal lives get. Yeah. It has gotten super, super crazy these last couple of weeks to the point where you guys probably realize we didn't, we missed a week. Yeah. We missed a first week since December where we didn't have a podcast and it's life has gotten that insane for us. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool to be in the band and have stuff on the side, but you know, my comedy career is growing and people are starting to book me. People are starting to recognize me for the podcast. I like that. I love that. I was like, yeah, hey, I listen to your podcast. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. You do know I do stand-up comedy. Yes, yes, that's why we book you. Because of the podcast. I don't care why you book me. Does this check? <laughs> just, just keep booking me. <laughs> keep that's booking I me. About. I don't care if you book me because you heard my jokes or because you like the podcast. Hey, you want to see if my jokes are nerd jokes. Thank you for booking me. I appreciate it. But yeah, it's gotten crazy, though, in the last couple of weeks, man, to the point where I have been exhausted. Yeah. And, and I beat Persona 5. Oh, I was going to say anorexia, but... Oh, God, no. <laughs> Being anorexia, I've never had a problem. I thought I was anorexic, but that was just... I'd been asleep, and I just woke up hungry. That was all that was. I, I dreamt was... I ate myself up a rope. <laughs> yeah. I am never going to have worries with that. I have 116 hours and 32 minutes in Persona 5. In your I... weeb simulator? Huh? In your weeb simulator? Oh, my gosh, dude. It was so amazing. It was so amazing. I have 51% of the trophies or, you know, achievements in the game on my first playthrough. And all my buddies that played it were like, I beat it in 109 hours. And how did you get all those trophies? Some of the, I have three trophies in the game that were ultra rare and should not have been able to do on your first playthrough. But I, I've played Persona so much in my life that I was like, well, if you do this, you should be able to do this. And they were like, how did you do that? 116 hours just get good yeah just just play <laughs> seven more hours than not with me in your game and you could have done stuff um and i had to go for the true ending of my first playthrough because i wasn't going to be happy playing i wasn't just going to take you saw the good ending no i want the true ending so it was uh the ultra weeb ending the ultra bro ultra waifu weeaboo ending was what it says for the trophy it's what it should say bruh you gets no pussy this is your trophy <laughs> they could have named the trophy that and i'd have been like you right fam i've played no other game since april 4th so from april 4th to may 8th i guess is when i got it mm. i've played nothing else 116 hours of my life sometimes two three hours a night four hours a night all day on weekends i gave up going to the movies for this game I gave up going out to the movies. I gave up going out with friends. I didn't go to brunch. I I took very limited comedy engagements. You remember I was trying to book less mm. when I got Persona, and I beat it. I'm back to normal. That's why we're here in the studio doing a podcast. That is it, because I'm back to normal. I will probably never do that again, ever. Ever? Until Persona 6 comes out? Until then... Persona 6 comes out. <laughs> and then I'm going to be unconsolable and you're not going to be able to get me to make sense um there is something i know this is our guardian special i want to throw this in there a couple weeks ago we did um a regular episode we were talking about persona and how you know atlas was really being hard on streamers about the game Mm -hmm. did you see that they relaxed no yes not only did okay here's what was so funny remember i told you i said the game is probably not going to be affected by this in sales it was not it was their biggest launch they sold more copies of this game than they've ever sold of any of the other games combined. And they would probably sold more if they'd have actually allowed streamers to do their That was the job. thing. They they basically after they were it was a massive hit. The streamers did something that I was not expecting. 
they got all the people to write in. People just started writing into Atlas. Relax it. I love your game. We're going to buy your game. We want to see how to beat it. You didn't give us a strategy guide. You're not making a strategy guide. I think it's unfair what you're doing. Like they got inundated with a write-in campaign. And it, it, and it wasn't a rude one and it wasn't death threats. You know, like sometimes gamers get a little too crazy. These were really nice to the point that Atlas said, we didn't realize that you guys were this passionate about it. Okay. We don't want the final boss battle spoil because I'm not going to lie. After 116 hours, I could fuck this up for everybody, but I'm going to tell you right now, who you think is your final boss is not your final boss. You're going to get to a part in the game where I could see why they wanted it. Do not stream past this part. It's just, it's just a giant cat bro. with like a third eye. Bro, let me tell you something. It just does this. It's like this. Get the to the end of a movie and you think, oh my God, that's the bad guy. What the fuck? That's not the bad guy. This is the bad guy. What the fuck? That's not the bad Bro, it took so many twists and turns in that last seven hours of the game. Mm -hmm. My jaw, I pretty much played with my mouth agape the whole time. I was like, <gasps> that was pretty much me. And it was, it was worth it. It was worth it. 116 hours of my life gone to this one damn game. I could, I could lay on my deathbed and say worth it. It was good. It was really good. The sales actually did. They, they spiked a little bit, nothing major, but they did spike after they released it, after they relaxed the streaming laws mm -hmm. and they explained why they didn't want it, you know, to go past this because they want this ending to be a surprise because of how long the game was in development. All the streamers have been really cool about it. There's a lot of great video out there. And everybody that played to the end of it that I know, you know, the guys that have beat the game were all like, I'm glad I didn't know what I was getting into. Because that ending, it was almost like, you know how you go, you went to the Sixth Sense and nobody would ever talk about the ending of the Sixth Sense? It was that kind of an ending where you were just like, oh shit, you bitches got me. And I was really happy with it. I was really, really happy with it. But um, it'll be a while before I ever commit to another game like that. Speaking it'll of somehow Shyamalan and Ding Dong has a, has a career again. Because of Split? Yeah. Oh, it's so good. You spent they spent like $15 million on that movie or something? Dumb? tiny and it's made like 200 million such a good movie i went and watched it at the theater and, and once again you remember why you loved m night Shyamalan because that movie was like holy crap you got me you freaking got me so it's a good movie and i you know me i'm big on you know i'm a big cinephile anyway man you know i'm gonna spend a mm -hmm. lot of time watching movies i which is weird i don't watch as much tv I'm so behind on TV shows, but I watch a lot of anime and I watch a lot of movies. And that's split did not disappoint. Loved it. All right. So we're going to get out of here. Mm -hmm. Going to get back to a regular recording sk schedule. I, I take it in the near future, but we at least wanted to knock out Guardians tonight and talk about it. Scale of one to 10. What's your rating? Mm. Nine. Give it a nine. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm right there with you. Nine, 9.5. Not a, not the ultimate movie, but damn, it's so good. Yeah, it is just damn near everything you wanted from a Guardians movie, and a lot more surprises. I think I was a little bit surprised by some of the stuff they stuck in there, but the humor, action, balance is what I exp when I go to a movie and I want a summer blockbuster. Guardians Volume Two was what I would expect from a summer blockbuster film. Yep. If Wonder Woman is half as good, I'll be pleased. It won't be. I think it will. Mm -mm. Can we do that one next? Our big, our big summer film. That's going to be June. <clears throat> okay. I, I think. I you, mean, I know I'm going to go see it in the theaters. I'm yeah, not, I'm, I'm not saying that'll it, be but... one. You and I, let's go watch it together, right. and then let's do an episode right afterwards. All because right. I feel I'm going into it right now, expecting Wonder Woman to be as good as Captain America: The First Avenger. I'm expecting it to be as good as maybe Suicide Squad, maybe, probably less. Bruh. You 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 just shoveling dirt on it before this even the funeral is even announced. DC's doing that themselves. <sighs> you you refuse to love like you haven't been hurt. <laughs> I don't have any faith in in DC's fucking movie arm. That's all it is. Like they've completely taken everything and just shit on it for so many for so long now, so many times. <clears throat> that is wild. That is so wild. Uh, so we'll it's see. an abusive relationship. Maybe maybe this time it'll be okay. Uh, no, it's I I made the acknowledge the acknowledge uh, uh, the analogy before with my brother. We were talking about Kanye West one time, and I said being a Kanye fan is like being in an abusive relationship. We just always make excuses for them when they screw up, 
We were always trying to explain it to our friends why they did what they did. Uh, and then we keep giving them the benefit of the doubt only for them to hurt us again. And that was what it's like to be a Kanye fan. And I said that to my brother and he was like, you fucked me up. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I, I never thought of it like that, but you just fucked me up. And I said, I'm, I didn't mean anything. I was just, you know, I was just thinking, I was just randomly, it's yeah. something that came to mind as a Kanye fan. He quit buying, he won't buy Kanye's records. He won't support his singles. He's like, he could drop, he could drop an album tomorrow. And he said, I wouldn't go out and run out and buy it day one. He has to prove himself to me again. He has to prove to me. He's not going to hurt me. Yep. He's, and and when when he said that, I was like, oh shit! And then I start thinking about something one day. Sometimes we do as geeks, we get into these abusive relationships with our fandoms and the things we're geeky for. Episode one, two, and three. You gonna fire shots like that, bro? You you do know we have fans. We I'm, just built I'm this just fan saying, base. Are you trying to get them to one, leave two, us? And three. It's exactly like that. You go to the first one, and you're like, oh, that wasn't good. Maybe the next one will be, no. Oh, God, it's worse. But it was better than the first one, so I'm going to make excuses to my friends about why I went and saw it. Because it was better than the first one. And then you go to the third, and you go, that was the best one out of all of them. Because everybody's dead, but. No. But it still wasn't as good. But they did redeem themselves with episodes. I feel like, what are we on, seven? Seven was just a rehash of four. Of four. And but then, it felt good. And then. It felt good, and it felt familiar. Member berries. Yeah. You remember? You remember? I like was I like, said, yes. it's, it's it's like all they have to do is just trot out an ATAT -AT walker and everybody go, ooh, it's a walker. And then they'll trot out a fucking ATST. Ooh, it's an ATST. And then oh, didn't they do that with Rogue One? And we got and I liked Rogue One. Maybe I'm one of the few people that Rogue, loved Rogue One. Rogue One should have been a fucking Ocean's Eleven heist movie on a Death Star. That's what it should have been. I liked Rogue One. It was a tragic hero. I mean, they still it all could have fucking. They still all could have fucking died at the end. Yeah. But having having it be like an Ocean's Eleven type movie where you actually give a shit about the characters, they have an actual plan. The plan gets executed, and then things go awry, and they have to improvise, and then they all wind up getting killed at the end. That would have been a much better film than a flat film where none of the characters are memorable. You don't give a shit about any of them whatsoever because none of them have any kind of story arc or development. I love K2SO. You shut your whore mouth. K2SO was the only thing that was good about the film and the only reason why he was good was because he was cracking jokes. He was the snarky you know, friend funny, that is, we is, all have. You remember K2SO but what was the name of the fucking Asian guys? Both of them. Wasn't Jen one? No, Jen Urso was the name of the main character. Oh, that was the lady. You can't remember the names of any of the motherfucking characters in that movie because none of them were likable. None of them they had a character dislikable. arc. They were dislikable. They just weren't memorable. None of them were likable. None of them had a character arc. None of them grew as characters. And it was just lazy writing for them to kill all of them off at the end because they just wanted to tie up loose ends. And so they didn't fucking bother with any kind of characterization or any kind of story arc or any kind of growth because they knew they were just going to fucking kill them in the end. That is the most brutal thing I've ever heard. But once again, we're in abusive relationships with our yeah. fandoms. I mean, it's I love the fucking movie. That's the thing. It's, that's just what sucks. Is like I go and I watch it, and I'm while I'm watching it, I'm like, this is nice. I like this. This is good. And then I walk out of the theater and I go, but that's our problem. <laughs> that's remember I said when I go to watch a movie, there's two people sitting in the seat. There's eight year old Rod, and then there's forty year old Rod. Eight year old Rod is having a blast. That guy is remembering his childhood, seeing these cool special effects, knowing he would have never saw a movie like this when he was eight and how far the industry has come that it can put this on a screen and how lucky he is to be alive right now. 40 year old Rod knows about plot holes, inconsistencies and bullshit filmmaking. And 40 year old Rod is a little bit jaded and 40 year old Rod walks out of the film after eight year old Rod watched it. And then he has a conversation with eight year old me and then says, you know, why did nobody address this? That's why eight year old Rod would have watched Iron Fist and been geeked. But 40 year old Rod watched Iron Fist first and picked it apart because it was a terrible TV series. Mm -hmm. And so that's the problem. The older, the more that we love our fandom, there's, there's two people. You have split personalities when you're watching it. There's split allegiances watching a film like those. I don't think that it's possible to do because the fucking fan base is so enamored with episodes four, five, and six. 
I don't think that it's possible to do a Star Wars film that doesn't include all like it has to touch all of these points it has to have walkers in it it has to have imperial star destroyers in it it has to have a death star in it it has to have lightsabers it has to have lightsaber battles it has to have stormtroopers who miss a lot of things like because star wars has kind of been put into this little box even though it's a huge expansive universe because the fandom has put it in this tiny little box, if you deviate at all from the formula that made those original films work, your film will not work. And so everybody tiptoes around doing anything outside. Like there are tons of stories that you could tell in the Star Wars universe that have nothing to do with any of the principal characters from any of the films that would be amazing, but no one will do them. Because if it doesn't include all of these little sandbox toys that we like, that we can ooh and ah at, nobody's going to watch it. And that's sad. Because yeah. we cheat ourselves. Because, like, you know, I mean, there are, what, a couple hundred novelizations out there that are in the, you know, what's considered to be the, the fucking Legends universe now. Yeah. Like, that are not canon anymore. That but they have, used to be. Yeah. But they used to be canon. Like, there, there are characters that they could bring in that would be great. There are storylines that they could tell that would be awesome. Like I said, if, if Rogue One was a heist movie, if Rogue One was told like Ocean's Eleven, if it was slick and fast and um, if the characters were interesting and if they had story arcs and if you wanted to see those characters more, you couldn't do that because Star Wars fans wouldn't be able to handle it. That's sad. And it is, but we, so we're in abusive relationships, but we put ourselves in them. Mm -hmm. Man, that's rough. That's something rough to think about. We, we may need to come back to this one. That may be, this may, this discussion right here we just had may need to be its own episode one day. Seriously. Yeah. I think we should start, let's look at some of the big movies like the Star Wars universe and Star Trek universe and some of these other geek fandom movies that we're really in love with, like Firefly. It would be hard to make a Firefly movie right now. No, it would be easy to make a Firefly movie. I don't think they could do it. I I don't I don't think Joss would do it ever. Yeah, I, he's done. Like he's done with that universe. He's done with those characters. He's never coming back to it. I think it could easily be done though. We'll talk about this. All right, guys, man, it's been a pleasure talking to you guys this week. Hopefully, we appreciate everything that you've done for us and sticking with us. Uh, once again. I feel like this is enough episode. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Team Lift Podcast with your hosts, Brandon Bowie and Roderick McDaniel. Join us again next week as we discuss more topics from geek culture. Be sure to follow us on our Twitter page, at GoTeamLift, as well as our personal pages, at Coach Silky and at Thyside. You can direct questions and comments to us on our Twitter page, as well as find links to all of our social media outlets. Thank you for listening. See you again next week.